series of short presentations by members of the panel on their thoughts on different aspects of our charge. And the format is we're going to have them come up to the podium and speak. And I'm going to ask each of the speakers then to take questions. It's actually the angle with this setup is you, you can see the people better from the podium than I can where it's hard to see people behind you. Um, I'm going to try to keep manage the time. So as those questions you know, come to an end, I'll cut you off and bring up the next speaker. And uh, we'll move through the, the six topics, and then we'll have some time at the end for some general discussion. Uh, the first speaker will be Dr. Nadia Drake, talking about framing the issue of UAP. Hello, and welcome back from lunch, everybody, and a welcome to those of you watching us virtually. Um, I'm Nadia. I am a scientist by training. I'm also a science journalist now, and my job is to try and synthesize the information that we've learned so far and summarize the situation. So if you will, um, put together a framework for thinking about UAP. Now I'm going to try and do this in a way that reflects the thoughts of the entire panel, although obviously we have a variety of opinions and ideas among us. Um, so I'd like to leave some time at the end for you to weigh in with disagreements or concurrences as needed. So first, a housekeeping matter. The definition of UAP changed during the seven months of our fact-finding process. UAP initially stood for unidentified aerial phenomena, with aerial referring to events occurring in Earth's atmosphere. That A is now defined as anomalous, which includes the space, air, and undersea domains. As a panel, I think we have decided to continue focusing our recommendations on the aerial domain, because that is where the majority of sightings and events have occurred, and also because we couldn't fully pivot to address the expanded scope of the new acronym. Beyond that, there are three points I want to make. The first is that for a number of reasons, UAP are obviously quite interesting. Right, that is why we are here. Recently, many credible witnesses have reported seeing unidentified objects in the sky, some of which are behaving rather peculiarly. peculiarly. In some instances, these reports include corroborating data from various instruments, various sensors. The challenge that we have is that the data needed to explain these anomalous sightings often do not exist or are incomplete for generating a conclusive analysis. This includes eyewitness reports, which on their own can be interesting and compelling, but often lack the information needed to make definitive conclusions about an object's provenance. We as a panel are thinking about the types of data that might add value to those reports and which could be useful on their own. As a corollary to date, in the refereed scientific literature, there is no conclusive evidence suggesting an extraterrestrial origin for UAP. Collecting more good data for the scientific community to review in a peer-reviewed context will be important for progress to be, to be made here. The second point, UAP offer an excellent opportunity to demonstrate the power of the scientific method and of empirically addressing a question using a multidisciplinary approach. It is our job as a panel to make some recommendations about how NASA might go about tackling this topic scientifically, taking advantage of the agency's resources, global outreach, and reputation. Key points to keep in mind here are that science is, hypoth science is hypothesis driven. Scientists build confidence in their theories by relying on well calibrated, well collected data, using well established methods with rigorous evaluation and independent corroboration. In science, skepticism is not a bias, nor is it a bad word. It is not our job to define nature, but to study it in ways that let nature reveal itself to us, regardless of how exciting or disappointing that reality might be. And to that end, when we're thinking about making recommendations about how NASA can tackle this topic scientifically, I think it's important to remember that it's not NASA's job to replicate the efforts of the Department of Defense, but rather to consider approaches that are complementary to what the All Domain Anomaly Resolution Office is doing. And so one of the questions that we as a panel, I think, need to center is, what can we recommend that NASA can do that the DOD cannot? Third point, to that end, 
what are we even looking for? How are we defining this problem? And how do the available data define what seems to be, to borrow a cliche, a very slender needle in a very big haystack? We heard a little bit about that today from Dr. Kirkpatrick, uh, who reported that there have been 800 events um, collected over about 27 years. And between two and 5% of those events display signatures that could be anomalous, defined as anything that is not readily understandable by the operator or the sensor, something that is doing something weird. Mr. Free and some of the experts on our panel have defined the background on which those events exist, the amount of stuff in the sky at any given time, like so. On average, FAA air traffic control handles 45,000 flights per day in US airspace, with 5,400 aircraft in the sky at peak time. Worldwide, on average, there are about 1,600 weather balloon launches per day. In the US, there are at least 184 of those balloons launched, and that doesn't include private companies or research flights. There are about 1.69 million recreational or model small uncrewed aircraft systems and an additional 880,000 drones are registered for commercial use. And these are not controlled by air traffic control and they are not scheduled flights. So that's our challenge. So in making recommendations as a panel, I think we need to look at what kind of imprint we want to leave. What does the situation look like five years from now? What does it look like 10 years from now? Why are we making these recommendations? We heard a little bit about this this morning um, from both Mike and David, who noted that many discoveries in science are rooted in initially unexplained and bizarre phenomena. So by carefully scrutinizing the sky, or however we end up defining our search space, and by collaborating across disciplines, we are likely to learn new things about our planet. That's a fact. And that's the commensal science case we might want to consider when making recommendations here. All right. Does anyone have yeah, thoughts? Questions, thoughts, comments? Oh. Carlin. I, I, I guess I want to challenge a little bit. Um, we changed the A from aerial to anomalous as the legislation required. But I'm not sure we've precluded um, anything beyond the aerial for this panel. And, and so I, I've just raised that because of Western Force, even though mostly what we've seen, and I think nationally, NASA's mission space would be more the aerial. I agree with you, and I think that is a parameter that we need to define as a panel. Yeah, I'll just uh, quickly jump in and, and echo some remarks I made this morning that, yes, the A changed from aerial to anomalous, but it's also accurate to say that the preponderance of events are in the aerial domain. That being said, your panel scope has expanded outwards, and I think we'll hear a little bit um, from David later on that very subject. I mean, I think anomalous, people often think about it as going down, and including ocean. But I think what's very relevant for NASA is going out, right? And, you know, looking at things in our solar system. And I think in some sense, um, I think oh, there's certain responsibilities in, you know, when we look at airspace, there's FAA responsibilities, there's DOD responsibilities. As you get further and further away from the Earth, eventually it's all NASA. <laughs> Once you get out, you know, towards the, you know, most, of, certainly much of the solar system and out uh, to our galaxy, that's all NASA. And uh, uh, when we start, uh, you know, thinking about things like, uh, you know, and this will be, you know, David will get to this, observations beyond the Earth's atmosphere. I think this change in language lets us also think about uh, out, you know, further out in the solar system as well. Good, yeah. Other thoughts? Great. Did, I, did I summarize everything totally accurately? Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. 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 Awesome.